Hi, I'm Scott from the Rio Grande Tech Team, and this is Jerry. And today we're going to be talking about brushes and sculpting within ZBrush. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got ZBrush booted up here, and today we're going to talk about uh, sculpting and some of the brushes that you can use. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need something to sculpt on. So I'm going to navigate over to my uh, tool menu over here, and I'm going to get just a Sphere 3D. So I'm going to left click and drag to bring it out and then immediately hit the T key to go into edit mode or just click up here onto uh, edit object up there. With ZBrush, the, the way you actually do your sculpting on the surface is with the brushes. So the brushes are located up here on the left and you can click on that little box to expand the menu. And as you can see, there's a lot of different brushes in here. Uh, you'll find your favorites as you go. I'll be showing a few demonstrations of some very common ones that you can do a lot with. Uh, but a lot of these uh, you'll really just want to play with, see what they do, see what you can make them do, and just kind of have fun with it. You'll, you'll find that you use more than others, and most likely you'll be using a small number of these. So right now uh, it defaults to the standard brush, and when I try to start sculpting on this, I'm going to be presented with this error message. Uh, so it says uh, you need to convert this primitive into a PolyMesh 3D by clicking this button on the tool palette. So I can click on that message to make it go away. And up here in my tool menu here is the Make PolyMesh 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now we can start sculpting. So if I start sculpting on this right away, with my standard brush, you can see it's kind of jagged. I can zoom in so you can see a little better. It's not really very sharp, and that's because our, our primitive here is very low geometry. Uh, the way you know is you can look up here at the top and see what your active points are for that primitive. And right now, I'm at about 8,066 points. Uh, which results in this kind of sculpting. It's very much kind of jagged. And if I undo that and I turn on my polyframe here, you can actually see a little better what's happening with the geometry. So as I sculpt, uh, it's just taking this geometry and it's manipulating it based on what brush I'm using. So in order to get a finer sculpt on it, we need to take a look at some of the sculpting tools. So there's a few ways of doing this and I'm going to show you uh, the most common ways and what they're what they're commonly used for. So if I navigate to the geometry tab over here on the right, uh, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, subdivide. So it's this button here and uh, keep an eye on my active points as I click this. So now it's up to 32. It's actually turning these into quads each time. So if I hit it again, now I'm up to 130. And if I turn off polyframes, you can see I've got a much smoother surface here. And if I go back into polyframes, you can see how it's actually kind of making quads out of each one of these uh, each one of these surfaces. So now uh, I'll turn polyframes off. If I go back in and sculpt, I'm getting a much smoother surface. And I can even subdivide one more time up to about half a million. And now I'm getting really smooth strokes with my brush. Now it's the same thing. Uh, this geometry is not being uh, changed. I still have the same number of points, but it's just manipulating the surface and, and deforming it with this, this brush. So I can kind of keep sculpting on this, and if I need to have more geometry as I go along, I can, I can keep subdividing. You just want to keep an eye on your active points, because the higher the points, the uh, more demanding it is of your computer, so you will need to keep an eye on that 
as you go. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to get back to my original primitive. So yeah, subdivide, uh, one more thing about subdivide is as I, as I subdivide this, uh, it's actually keeping track of every time that I click on it. So you can see up here I've got this subdiv uh, number here and a little slider. So as I slide through these, so here's my original. After I clicked it once, I got this, clicked it again, got this. Uh, the reason that it keeps track of those is because as I'm sculpting on this uh, kind of high resolution surface, I can go back and I can actually do some sculpting on this as well and it will translate to my higher subdivision levels. Uh, just keep in mind there are a few tools that you can use within ZBrush that don't like that you have these lower subdivisions on top. So if you try to use them it will say uh, you need to delete these lower subdivisions and that's where this button is right here. So if it tells you to do that you can click on this delete lower and now I just have my high resolution uh, half million poly model here. So again I'm going to undo there we go so the second one that we're going to talk about is called dynamic subdivisions so that's located again in the geometry palette uh, if I expand the dynamic subdiv here so what dynamic subdivisions does is if I turn it on here by clicking dynamic you can see it kind of smoothed out my surface here but my active point count has not changed. So what this has done is it has created basically an effect that makes it look smooth when in reality it's not. It's just kind of showing you what this, this model will look like once it's smoothed out. So there are some, some options within these that uh, you can play around with. And if you're, if you're doing things like booleans, uh, you can actually boolean with these dynamic subdivision parts. Uh, so that way you can, you can create a smooth surface without changing your active point number. Uh, and then if, if I want to apply this, I can just hit the apply button here. And you can see my, my point count jumped up to about 130,000 on there. And then I can start sculpting on that. But if I undo and go back, uh, I haven't applied it yet. If I try to sculpt on it, I can still sculpt on it a little bit uh, to see what that's going to look like. But again, my my poly count hasn't changed. So uh, dynamic subdivisions, like I said, are, are good for booleans. Uh, they're, they're good for just adding quick geometry. You do have a few options to play around with. Uh, the dynamic thickness within uh, this uh, within dynamic subdivision is a very useful feature that just came out with the 2021 update uh, but for these kind of large uh, primitives it's not something you would really use but there are applications for it so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off dynamic subdivisions so I'm back at my original primitive so <clears throat> the next one to talk about is Dynamesh. Uh, that's located right here. So Dynamesh, what it does is it looks at the shape of your, your piece and it will actually create a mesh kind of on top of it. So if I go ahead and turn on Dynamesh, you can see my active points uh, hasn't really jumped all that high. And if I turn on my polyframes here, you can see the geometry is pretty uneven. But what that allows me to do is, let's say I'm going to grab a brush real quick, and I'm going to grab the move brush, and I'm just going to start pulling some stuff out. I'm going to stretch out some of these, some of these polygons in here. So you can see that I don't really have the best surface finish here. It gets kind of jagged as I take these uh, 
these polygons in here and I start really stretching them out, you can see how long some of them get. Uh, those will result in kind of a jagged model. But with Dynamesh, uh, once I have it activated and I start sculpting, I can always recalculate the Dynamesh. So the way you do that is you maneuver off of the model, hold control, drag out, and you can see it's recalculated the mesh in those areas. So now I can continue to drag these out even further. So I can drag those out, really stretch them out, and then redynamesh. And I can really get some volume with this. Uh, things like subdivisions, uh, like when we were just clicking the subdivide button, uh, dynamic subdivisions. If, if you're really sculpting and pulling stuff really far out like this, um, the normal reaction would be to, you know, if you drag something out like this, you would subdivide it, uh, drag it out a bit more, subdivide it. But if you do that, then all these areas where you're not sculpting are getting subdivided each time. So it makes your active point count just go crazy. And you could be up to 15 million polys really easily on something that's relatively simple that you could do with Dynamesh. Just using uh, subdivide or even dynamic subdivisions, uh, if you like, are good for sculpting those really high details. But if you're going to be actually really deforming your model, really pulling and pushing and deforming it a, a lot, kind of kind of like this, then Dynamesh is actually a very good place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to control Z to undo all that and get back to my original primitive. And the last one that I want to talk about is Sculptress. Now let me get back to my standard brush. So uh, Sculptress or Sculptress Pro, uh, you can turn it on up here at the top. Now I'm still at 8,000 66 polys. This is my original primitive, but when I start sculpting on it, you can see it's not as jagged as you would expect from when we had Sculptor's Poe off. Here I'll do another one. So you can see the difference there. Now let me turn on polyframes to show you what's going on here. So what Sculptress does is it creates geometry as you go. So I'll show you in action. I'll turn back uh, Sculptures Pro back on, uh, Sculptures Pro back on, and as I sculpt, you can see how it's creating geometry in that area. So, uh, Sculptress is a is a good way of kind of making something on the fly really quickly. It's good for kind of prototyping. You don't have to worry about you know should you use Dynamesh should you use subdivisions, you can go right into Sculptress, start sculpting, and it will just add geometry on the fly. Now you can see a lot of these are actually triangles as we go. Uh, that's not going to make too big of a difference. There are ways to uh, kind of change the what this mesh looks like after the fact. Uh, we'll get into those a little bit later, but this is uh, another way that you can do it. it uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that you can see it's a lot better uh, surface finish than when I was just sculpting on this normally, like this. But it's still not super smooth. Uh, it's, it's a good way to kind of block in the details, get those going, and then you can remesh it and uh, subdivide it a couple times and and that's when you can really start flushing out those those details. So yeah those are a few ways to kind of get started with sculpting because you're gonna need to add geometry there are different uh, reasons why you would use uh, some of these that we've that we've already been over. Uh, so you can kind of play around with those uh, the, the basic overview is that subdivisions are 
uh, you know, subdividing is good for high detail pieces that don't need a lot of volume. Uh, dynamic subdivisions are good for quick subdivisions. Uh, you don't have a lot of control over those, but it's good for things like booleans or making something just look high poly when it's not really, and uh, you're just trying to keep your points down a little bit. Uh, Dynamesh is good for the big stuff, you know, really lots of volume, pulling stuff out, uh, really changing the shape of this primitive to the extreme. Uh, so Dynamesh is a good place to start there. Uh, and then Sculptress is good for, again, just kind of prototyping stuff and then remeshing it and, uh, and then using the like subdivisions or, or something like it to really flesh out the details. Uh, one more thing about Dynamesh is you do have a res resolution slider here. So if you want to, you can get a finer or less fine Dynamesh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, so if you want to keep the poly count really low at the beginning, you can you can bring this down to something like 60 and, and sculpt on it and then start to add more geometry when you really start to dig into the details. So, so those are just a few ways to get started sculpting. Now, I'm going to go back to my original primitive. I'm back at 8,000. And we've already seen the standard brush. So I'm going to pull out uh, another common brush called Clay Buildup. So now I need some subdivisions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this just a couple times. Uh, to subdivide it, and we're up to about 130, so that'll be just fine. Now, I'm going to click and drag across this model, and you can see that I'm getting quite a bit of volume from this clay buildup brush. That's actually one of the benefits of it. And you can see as I stretch these, stretch out my geometry, you can see how jagged that's getting. That's where Dynamesh would, would come into, into play. So I could actually re-Dynamesh, create a new mesh over this area and, and keep going. Because Dynamesh is nice. It won't actually change the geometry out here. It'll only recalculate the mesh on areas that you've been sculpting. But Clay Buildup is a great brush for getting uh, lots of volume without kind of pulling on on things. But you'll notice that it's very much kind of blockish. So the reason for that is because of one of our brush modifiers. So over here on the left you'll see the uh, alphas. So if I click on those, right now my alpha is this kind of white circle. So as I as I sculpt on it, I'm getting that kind of white circle in the shape of my clay buildup brush. Now let me show you. I'm going to turn this alpha off, uh, which is up here on the top under Quick Pick. Now if I go back in, same brush, I haven't touched anything else. If I go back in, now I'm getting a bit more of a dome to the surface. So alphas are basically modifiers for each brush. So I can go in and let's do one of these. We'll just say this one. So now I've got this kind of design and as I start drawing it's going to start using the characteristics of the clay buildup brush but it's actually changing what's being sculpted based on what is what alpha I'm using. I'm going to undo that real quick. Now, as you can see, I'm drawing kind of freehand on this mesh. Uh, there are more modifiers that you can apply that deal with this stroke. So if I go up to this other box here under stroke, I can change how that brush is applied. So right now we're on freehand, so I'm able to just kind of draw however I wish onto this sphere. But if I go into, let's say, drag rectangle, then I can actually click and drag out this alpha design on my surface. Or if I'm not using an alpha at all, I can still click and drag and make a 
bit of a circle there. So it, it's worth it to mix and match, play, uh, try some different brushes, try some different modifiers and or stroke modifiers and alphas, because you can cr really create some cool effects here. So like if I go back into something like this, I'm back into freehand, or I can kind of drag that out. Now, let's look at a few other modifiers real quick. So right now, as I, in fact, I'm going to turn this alpha off, and I'm going to go back into freehand, and I'm going to undo to kind of clean my surface here. So as I click and drag across this model, it's adding uh, positively. So it's actually raising my brush stroke above the surface. So if you want to actually go the opposite direction, if you hold the Alt button while you're drawing, it does the opposite. So normally the brush will raise the surface and if I hold Alt it'll actually cut into the surface. And I can really start uh, kind of adjusting these and just by mixing alt and, and normal operation, I can, I can really start blocking out details really quick and kind of get something going here. Now you can control what it defaults to. So let's say I'm, I'm cutting into the surface more than I'm adding to it. So up here at the top, uh, highlighted, you have a Z add and you have Z sub. So Z add is the default for my brush here. So as I just click and drag, it will actually raise up the surface. Now if I click on Z sub, and this time I'm not holding alt, I'm just clicking and dragging, it is actually cutting into the surface. So that's more of a personal preference on how you want to do that. Uh, I personally leave mine at Z add, so I can uh, sculpt like normal to raise the surface and hold alt to cut into the surface. You can also control the size of your brush. So up here at the top you'll see a draw size or if you hit the S button on your keyboard it will bring up the hotkey for draw size and if I move out of the way it'll it'll go away so if I hit the S command and then drag this I can I can change the size of my brush based on whatever I'm sculpting or you know get this really nice and small for the the details and things like that. Uh, another thing, I'm going to bring my brush size back up, is as I sculpt, you can see I've got a bit of a taper here. Now if you look at my circle here on the mesh, I have a outer circle and an inner circle. So the outer circle is the entire diameter of the, the, the brush. Now, that inner circle, the inner circle is where you will get the most volume. And then as it gets outside that inner circle, it starts to kind of taper off in this direction. So you can kind of see if I line it up just right, how that, that works. And what that's called is focal shift. Uh, and that's right above draw size. So I can adjust focal shift. I'm going to bring this down to about zero and I'm just going to continue this so you can see how I'm getting a bit more of a taper now because I've made that inner circle much smaller. Or I can get something a bit more extreme if I bring this down to minus zero. Now I'm getting something really extreme. There's no taper on it so I'm getting these kind of sharp cliffside edges here. 
So these are things you'll be adjusting quite a bit as you go. Uh, one thing, uh, just as a side note, on draw size, you have dynamic. So I'm going to bring my focal shift back to zero, and I just click in here, uh, key in a number, and hit enter. Now my under my brush size, you'll see it says uh, dynamic. So if I turn dynamic on, my my brush size is actually changing based on, or it's it's actually staying the same based on how close or how far away I am on this this primitive. So you can see it's as I kind of move in and out, this is staying the same size. Now, if you had dynamic turned off, uh, what you the size you see on your screen is what it would stay, regardless of whether you were zoomed really far out or uh, really far in. So, dynamic uh, draw size is just a good thing to to leave on here. So, the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at just some common brushes. So. Um, so when I open up my brush menu, uh, FYI, on the brush menu, if I hit the B key on my keyboard, it will bring up the brush menu. And if I, if I select one, let's say I want to do the standard brush. So I hit B to bring up my brush menu. I'm going to hit S for standard. It's going to separate out all the brushes that start with S. And then you'll notice these little letters here next to each one. Uh, so for standard, it would hit the, the T key. So again, if I uh, hit B to bring up my brush menu, S to go to the brushes that start with S, and then T to select the standard brush, uh, I can simply use hotkeys to bring up certain brushes. So like uh, the clay buildup brush. Uh, so it'd be B to bring up my brushes, C for clay buildup, and then B is the letter for the clay buildup. So that's kind of a quick way you don't have to go hunting in your brush menu here for a certain one. You can just learn the hotkeys uh, to bring those up quickly. So I'm going to get my uh, standard brush out, so I'm going to do B. S, T. I've got my standard brush here. Uh, so we, we've already seen a bit of the standard brush. So it's, it's very much, uh, as the name suggests, it's a very standard brush. So uh, unless you're using uh, things like stroke modifiers and alphas, you'll get a pretty simple kind of domed area there. You can't get a lot of volume if I keep sculpting over and over again in the same spot. You can see it's pretty much, that's about the extent that it's going to build up. I can't really get it much higher unless I really kind of force it. Um, something like like this would be more for kind of roughing in details, uh, things like that that you're going to be using later and you can really kind of play with the draw size to get this how you how you want it, but uh, it's that's really what it's best at. Uh, the clay buildup brush, as we discussed earlier, is great for volume. You can keep kind of bringing these surfaces out, and just be careful because you can, you know, when you're sculpting like this, it's easy to get really carried away and then turn your model and realize that it's really far out there. So just be careful with that. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with brushes is that you have uh, your intensity slider here. So if you find that this clay buildup brush is just going a bit too fast, you can actually kind of bring down the intensity a little bit. And you can see that everything is going much slower now. Uh, it just creates a more subtle stroke and you can not worry about kind of getting in trouble by uh, trying to go too fast while you're kind of sculpting everything. So just keep an eye on that if uh, if it's just going too, too fast for you and the geometry is moving too much, uh, bring down this intensity slider a little bit and, and give it another go.
So another one that you'll be using quite a bit is the Damien Standard brush. So if I go to brushes, uh, hit D for Damien Standard and S. Now this is more of a kind of a creasing brush. So you can see this one, this one by default actually goes to Z sub. And I would have to hit Alt to actually create these little peaks. Because by default, it's going to create these little valleys. So this is another very common one. You can create some nice kind of creasing in there. Uh, really have interesting textures, create little transitions here. So that's another uh, common one. Now, the last one that I would say is one of the most common is the move brush. So if I hit B to bring up the brush menu, M for move, and the letter for this one is V. So I'll hit the V key. Now the move brush is kind of like the name suggests. I'm kind of clicking and dragging. This is the one we saw earlier when I was demonstrating Dynamesh. So this is a, a good one for just kind of grabbing pieces of geometry and moving them how you need to. Uh, I'll show you one application where it works really well. So if I go back to the Damien Standard brush, so I'm going to hit B, D, S, and I'm going to create a little valley here. Now I'm using a mouse, and as anyone has ever used a mouse before, uh, try to draw a straight line sometime. Uh, it is very, very difficult. Uh, drawing a straight line with a mouse uh, is almost impossible. So there are ways of, of creating straight lines within ZBrush, but I want to show you uh, how we can use the Move Brush to kind of straighten things out a bit here. So I'm going to go uh, back into my Move Brush. So I'm going to do B. M and V. And if I want this to be a little straighter, you know, my mouse kind of wavered a little bit right there. So I can I can play with my brush size to kind of bring this in. This brush size seems pretty good. So I can go in and make some adjustments. And I may have to kind of bring my brush size down a bit to adjust that, but the move brush is great for kind of cleaning up uh, things like subtle curves. You can really go in and just kind of tweak it a little bit and I'm just clicking and dragging. So that's one great application for the, the move brush. Just cleaning up a bit of an edge and making sure it's, it's straight. At least that's one of the, the things that I prefer to use the move brush with. So that's pretty much a, kind of a brief introduction to brushes. Uh, I would recommend uh, just playing with these. Uh, some of them you won't know what they automatically do at first. Some uh, have a tendency to break your model uh, if, if you don't use them right. So it really just encourages play because there's all kinds of great ones in here that uh, you can use on a regular basis. Uh, Polish is another one. Uh, so I'm using the polish brush and I can go in and uh, kind of smooth out areas. Uh, there's a flatten command that comes in handy quite a bit. So if I do B, F, and then flatten, I can you know, increase my draw size here and just create little flat spots where I need to. I mean, some of these, you don't, the, the uses for them aren't immediately obvious until you reach a certain point where you need something like that. So yeah, just, to, just to start, just play with some of these brushes and, and see what they can do for you. But the, the ones that we've talked about, the, the standard brush, uh, clay buildup, uh, the uh, Damien standard brush, and the move brush are ones you'll be using quite a bit, most likely. So before before we end this, there's a few hidden brushes in here that may not be immediately obvious.
So right now I'm still on my flatten brush so I can kind of flatten certain areas. But if I hold shift, you can see my brush has automatically changed to a smooth brush. So this is actually going to smooth out the geometry and basically it takes any kind of fine details and just starts to smooth out the geometry a little bit. So if you're if you're working with something that uh, didn't quite come out the way you want, you can actually go back and kind of smooth it a little bit, redo the detail, and, and try again, or just control Z and, and restart that way. But the the smoothing brush is a great way of, uh, if I go back to my standard brush, I'm going to do a really fine line here. So now if I, if I go into my smooth brush, you can see how it's just kind of kind of flattening that out and making it a bit more a uh, bit smoother. Uh, same with these as I kind of smooth them it starts to bring that geometry down quite a bit. So another one that might not be immediately obvious is the masking. Uh, this will come in handy a lot. So I'm going to increase my brush size. Uh, in fact, I'll just undo. Actually, we'll just go to the back side here. So my masking brush is if I hold control, uh, it brings up my mask pen. And I'll, I'll uh, before we proceed, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate that uh, when you're do using a smooth brush, or a masking brush, you still have these modifiers here. So your your stroke, uh, your alphas, these things still apply. So this is just more customization for all your brushes. So if I hold control and I draw my model, then it's going to mask off a certain area. Now, why would you need to mask that? So let's say, you know, I've got this little triangle in here and I want to sculpt on just that area. I can mask off these areas around it and as I start sculpting, you can see my brush is only affecting the area that is unmasked. So if you need to build a bit of volume, uh, you've got an area where you don't want to affect the detail, uh, make sure to just mask it off. and. Your, you can see the, the mask is uh, it kind of has a bit of a fade to it. So you can also adjust your focal shift the same way you would with a brush and get a little bit less of that kind of drop off. Now because I'm at 130,000 polys here, you can see I'm still getting a bit of a jagged surface there. Now if I go back and I actually subdivide. See, uh, it's it's telling me that I've got my lower subdivisions and it doesn't like that I'm trying to subdivide again. So I'm going to delete lower and I'm going to subdivide up to, let's try 467. So now if I sculpt again, you can see what the difference looks like here. So now I, with lower poly count, it was a bit more jagged. Higher poly count, my mask is a little more defined. So yeah, masking is one of those things that you'll be using quite a bit. Um, and it comes in handy for all sorts of things, but uh, it may not be immediately obvious at first that that brush is there. And just a kind of a quick tip, uh, you can invert this mask. Uh, this is just kind of a side note, so if I hold control and I click off the model here, I will actually reverse the mask. So after I've brought this triangle up, if I don't want it to get messed up because I'm going to be sculpting around it, I can simply hold control, click off to the side, and invert that mask. And then uh, if I want to clear that mask, 
I can hold control, click and drag off to the side here, and that will get rid of my masking on the surface. So the last brush uh, to talk about, you, uh, you'll be using this one to a lesser extent, but on occasion it does come in handy. So, uh, and that is called the relax brush. So the relax brush, uh, if you hold shift to go to your smooth brush, left click and hold, and now release shift, it actually activates kind of a relax. So it's very similar to smoothing. Uh, it's, it's just going to kind of relax the geometry that's there. Uh, very rarely will you need to use it, but on occasion when, when you're smoothing something and you find that it's getting more jagged as you're trying to smooth it, then that's where the relax brush uh, really comes into play. And just because we're talking about the smooth brush, uh, I want to show you in Sculptress. So I'm going to activate Sculptress mode real quick, how the smooth brush works. So remember when, when I had my draw size here, kind of low, you can see how it's actually adding geometry as we sculpt. So if I do the same thing with the smooth brush, so if I smooth it, it actually decimates the geometry in that area. So in the same way, the sculptress mode actually adds geometry when you're sculpting, it takes it away when you're smoothing. So that's kind of what's going on there when you're using something like a smooth brush. So that's pretty much uh, an introduction into some of the brushes, a few ideas about when to use these different kind of sculpting elements like subdividing, dynamic subdivisions, Dynamesh, Sculptress, uh, and, and it'll be up to you to really just dig in and, uh, and play with those based on the kind of stuff you're doing. Uh, at first it won't be immediately obvious whether to use Dynamesh or just subdivide, uh, because there, there are different reasons why you would use both based on, you know, if you want high volume, then something like Dynamesh or Sculptress might be the way to go. Uh, or if you're not really dragging things out with high volume, you're just doing details, then something like the Subdivide would be fine. Or, uh, you know, if you're just kind of bullying out a certain object, then Dynamic Subdivisions will work just fine for that. So it really just requires you go in and, and start messing with it and really start sculpting. You will get to a point where uh, you'll know immediately which one to choose. So that's just kind of a, a brief introduction into how those work. And and the, the play will also come with your brushes. You'll, you'll find that you're using some more than others. Uh, just go in and try them out, see what they do, bring out some primitives and, and start drawing on them. And uh, just just have fun with it. You'll find little br brushes that do little things that you'll find really useful in, in certain situations. And just remember that you do have these stroke modifiers. You do have alphas. Uh, they apply whether you're doing, um, whether you're using a mask or uh, a smoothing brush, you still have options to change those individual brushes. So just don't forget that those are there. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.